Good morning, everybody. Uh, aloha from the North Shore of Oahu. We are back in my studio this morning, and we're going to continue uh, working on this 30 by 40 uh, moonlight piece that, uh, upon completion, it will be headed uh, to the Bill Mack Gallery in uh, Las Vegas at the Forum at Caesars Palace. Uh, and this will uh, anchor my display over there. So uh, visit the gallery. It's phenomenal. It's it's just the most beautiful gallery over there. Okay, so just check that out. But um, I apologize for being late. I varnished the uh, part that I was going to be working on, and so in keeping up with my own advice to not work on a piece that is kind of sunken in, you know, as it dries. The, the oil paint naturally loses uh, its uh, sheen, and that makes it difficult to uh, completely and confidently discern what colors and shades and, and, uh, and all of that are. Um, so I needed to uh, varnish, at least uh, retouch varnish, at least the sky area where I'm gonna work on it. And we were waiting for it to dry before uh, I could start. Uh, not completely dry, but dry enough to work on. Um, so anyway, I apologize for the delay, um, but we're here now, and uh, like I said, we're gonna work on the uh, sky cloud area. Uh, we may not get to the moon, I don't know, um, but uh, basically what I had done is I had underpainted this a few days ago, if you recall. Um, right now, in the process of the underpainting, uh, the, the uh, clouds appear to be uh, playing keep away with the moon, right? Uh, and that was done uh, in order to uh, uh, work on the glow of the moon a little bit better without all these clouds in the way. Knowing that a few days later when I do work on that area, I will fix that part anyway, all right? So it was a matter of, of uh, uh, convenience and facility to, to set it up that way. And so, uh, if you're doing it that way, you know not to freak out that it looks weird because it does look weird, but you're not done yet, right? That's just the first step. So uh, <laughs> wait, wait until you really make a major error before you freak out. And even then I would advise, don't freak out, right? We can, we can fix pretty much anything, okay? That, anyway, anything that I've ever encountered, I was able to fix. We gotta leave the freak out to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. You, if you can reassign that to somebody else, then do that. Okay, so we'll work on the clouds. Um, uh, the, the base for uh, the clouds uh, was our indigo and white, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so we, we start there so that uh, if you remember, the, the, the mixtures that you had previously, uh, you can, you can uh, bank on that, that you're gonna be in the same neighborhood of those colors, right? And they don't have to be exact, okay? Um, they just have to make sense uh, being where they are, all right? And uh, parts of it got uh, cooled off by some uh, phthalo blue, all right? So you can have that in your mix a little bit. And it also is a good, way for you to train your eyes, right? To look at a color that you mixed and match it up with what, where you're trying to go with it and, you know, take a guess as to if it's not close enough, right? You take a guess as what might make it closer, okay? And that will practice your skill of trying to discern stuff, right? Because when we're trying to get lessons from this piece, we're trying to up your skill level in all the, all the paintings that you'll ever do in the future that you can use these skills, right? So what we're trying not to do is just tell you, oh, okay, uh, first paint it this way and then paint it that way and then, and then that's it, right? Now, um, and then, you know, you, you, might, you might be successful at that. You're gonna learn how to do that one thing just, just right, but if you can, approach it in such a way that it can help you with uh, future paintings, I think that's better, okay? Um, so we'll do that. All right. Oh yeah, as usual, we got the lovely Ann Wood producing this, uh, uh, these episodes that she has done with all of them. Um, say hi, Ann. Good morning, everybody. 
There you go. And as usual, if you got any comments, um, uh, questions, uh, or answers, uh, that all, all of that is welcome, right? And again, just to review, this is not really a tutorial, right? This is, uh, I'm sharing with you what I, what I do, uh, what I normally do, and um, to give you the, uh, uh, a simulation of what it's like if you were sitting uh, in my studio and, and we were just visiting with each, with each other and I'm, and I'm painting while we're doing it, right? And then you've got questions and I'll tell you why I just did what I did. Uh, or why I didn't do it the way you thought I should have. Um, <laughs> well, mostly that second part. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring that up. For okay, all right. So, anyway, enough stalling. Let's, let's get on with it. So, this paint has been sitting here all week. It's still viable. It's great. It's just perfect. Obviously, all the paints uh, will start to dry the moment you squeeze it on your palette. And I kind of like the, the idea that, you know, it's, it's a few days old. Uh, obviously, there's a point where it's useless, and so uh, we start over. But um, I, I, like the, I like the texture of it. And, and uh, for those of you that already know, um, the white and all the lighter colors take, take a while to, uh, to dry up, right? Uh, the, and opposite of that are the, the, the darker colors. The, the dark blues and, and the blacks and the browns and the, the dark greens, they, um, uh, they dry it quicker. Okay. So what we're trying to do here right now is trying to get close to uh, this color that we have and we're gonna use that as a, a jumping off point to uh, bring about all the other um, shades that we want to use, okay? So at least we can get into the neighborhood first of all. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, and you can match up your brush to um, what you have on there to see if it's too light or too dark, right? Looks like it's kind of light, so let's go darker. Okay, so far, it's just indigo and white. Let's see. Looks lighter still, yeah. Oh, that's not so bad, but. It's, like I said, the, uh, the indigo is a little on the, um, it leaves purple, yeah? So I'm gonna add some blue in there just to take the edge off of that. Some uh, phthalo blue I just added a little bit. Okay, and I like that so much better. Again, I always encourage everybody to, to get um, photo references so that um, you, can, you can train your, your eye to be able to paint what you see. Very, very handy. You know, what's interesting today is we have different light in the studio. What? Well, I think it's darker outside, is it? Yeah, Today? but yeah, but all our lights is artificial. So it should be the same. Yeah. I have one camera. That's the one nice... thing. That's the one thing that I like about here is it's always the same. It's it's controlled. Yeah. Of the uh, the clouds, 
so that uh, they're kind of uh, wispy, right, instead of solid. And I'm going to connect it to this one other cloud here. And let's try to get it as randomly in there as possible. And uh, so that they're not all consistently solid everywhere. Yeah? You can you can show some of the sky behind it showing through. That's all good. look of the, um, the indigo in, in the mix so you can see it coming through when I uh, go over the, uh, the lighter colored cloud uh, on the inside part instead of the edge. All right? And that's all good. That's, that, it, it adds uh, kind of a, a variety to, to the deal. Yeah. of it on the edges um, I don't put a lot of pressure on the brush right so it's just the, the tip of the brush that's um, hitting the canvas uh, kind of randomly right and that gives it that effect I right, see that's when it's solid it looks like that and then when I back off of the pressure it's just those tips and you know this brush is is, is kind of beat up from the way I, I've been using it, uh, especially when I'm scumbling. Right? You've been waiting for that word all day. <laughs> right. I was driving and I was thinking, how can I sneak in scumbling? 12 minutes into this? and 42 seconds in. I got it. <laughs> I was scumbling to get ready this morning. Uh, was no, that scrambling? <laughs> uh, yeah, those are not interchangeable. We, we had rain this morning on my side of the island. Was it raining up here? A uh, little bit. It kind of always rains up here a little bit. Yeah. This is just the mountains. So. Yeah. And my, my puppy knows he won't go outside if it's wet. He doesn't like wet grass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm with your puppy on this one. <laughs> well trained. Especially if you have the comfortable, warm, dry home as a, as a choice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm already adding uh, clouds to the, the uh, previously vacant sky part. So I'm just not, I'm not limiting my work to the existing clouds from the earlier sessions, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna break up this, uh, this kind of circular area here where all the clouds are away from it. I'm gonna try and uh, sneak in some, some other clouds in that area so that it doesn't look so weird. Okay. And let's do some here. Again, it's lightly touching the canvas, and if your brush has hardly any paint on there, you might push a little bit more. But basically, your your what's guiding you is what's happening in front of you. Just take a look at what you're doing, and knowing that the the paint will be a little bit more solid if you push hard on the brush, and not so much if you back off of it, right? And so make make your own judgment whether it's right or wrong. You're going to learn something, so. All of that is good, right? Don't be so obsessed with 
you know, got to get it right. Even though we're all trying to get it right, right? Uh, nobody wants to do this incorrectly, right? But don't allow the misfire to mean more than what it is, right? Adjust, adjust what you did to to not do what you don't like it to 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 be, and uh, then go again. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. So we're setting that up. got some fans back on this morning. We've got Linda's on. Patty Rolfe is on. Hey guys. Hi Linda. Ron Keller. Hi Ron. Oh. Hi Patty. Bob is on. Bob Hoff. Hello. How's it? So Linda's question is about the wave being Gladys. Okay. So you know Gladys has done duets with some great vocalists. Okay. I say this because as a moon lover, that moon could easily sing the lead. Yes, it could. That's true. And you would have a duet. Sure. Um, have any of your paintings ever been produced as duets, or do you always have a lead? What do you think? Well, we're talking about a focal point, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, a good um, example of, because like, uh, you should have at least one focal point, at least one, right? You can have more than one, you know, you can have a secondary, a tertiary one, right? But, uh, and, and the way I orchestrate it is that they're not equal, all right? When you have the moon in the painting, mm -hmm. that's automatically going to attract attention because um, it's basically the brightest thing out there. Right. So how can you not have attention to that, right? So she's right about that. Uh, the, the moon actually... Uh, the reason why uh, uh, the moon may not take the um, the center spot in, in as far as the attraction that the painting uh, emanates is that uh, the moon is static and usually people gravitate towards something that's uh, perceived to be in motion. Mm. All right, anything that's in motion attracts attention against a backdrop of stillness. Okay, that's just the way we are. Right, we respond to movement. Right? Ask any alarm company. Right. They, just, they <laughs> respond to movement. Okay? So the fact that it's moving, it will attract attention. Now, uh, the moon is bright, so it will also attract attention. Mm -hmm. So it can be argued that you cannot really take uh, attention away from the moon. And, uh, and that may be so. And that's okay. Right? But I'll tell you what. Uh, I can make it so that the moon is not the primary one. The, if you want the moon to be the primary uh, focal point, put it in an, in an image where the water is still. Mm. It's flat. There's nothing going on. And then the moon will be the star of that show. Yeah. Okay? Because there is no movement that's trying to take away the attention from the moon. 
Good question, Linda. That was good. Ron Kaler says, and we're scumbling, and we're, <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of scumbling going on here for the clouds, okay? Um, so it's, a, it's good. You can practice your scumbling skills. I, I do have to say that the scumbling sound doesn't bother me as much <laughs> with paint as it did I'm on the dryer. All. <laughs> the dryer canvas, that brush was just, it was really? like chuck. Yeah, I just, it was a lot of, maybe it makes me think of cleaning because you're rubbing really hard. Which, it feels which like, you don't like. <laughs> I, I like it if I could pay someone to do it. Oh, yeah. My children aren't quite at that level of uh, learning to do chores. Uh oh. They're at the age, they're just not at the level. <laughs> okay, Bob, this is for you. When you were worried about all those uh, uh, light areas being gone, we're putting them back. awkward when you when, they, when, they, when you see that especially when they know they're looking at a painting now they might accept it in nature when they're looking at it from from being out there but if it's in a painting uh, they won't do it as, as uh, easily so don't put yourself in a defensive position where you have to justify why certain things are painted the way they were you know, you can reason out as much as you can. That's the way it was. 
uh, and, uh, and get nowhere. Again, uh, it's just the tip of the brush that's barely touching the uh, canvas, and sometimes a little bit of the side of it, you know. Uh, and then I'm exhausting the, the load of paint on that side, and so uh, I'm just not putting a whole lot of color uh, on the on the on the canvas, right? But that's okay, right? Because it it, uh, it gives you a nice effect that uh, can be achieved uh, best that way. And if you want to tell everybody where, where these videos are, that would be a good idea in case they forgot. Sure. So you can catch, of course, the live, live episodes on um, Tabora Gallery Facebook page. And you can go to the Roy Tabora Facebook page because we automatically share them. So whatever page you're on, you can see them. But to catch the missed episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel. It's Tabora Gallery Waikiki. I have pasted it um, every time we repost. I paste the link so you can click on that link and go directly to the the page. We have, oh gosh, we're on series 11. So there oh, yeah, are- this is 11, isn't it? Yeah. So um, eight of the 11 series are fully posted. And once I leave the studio and we have a little bit more bandwidth, we can post nine and 10 to YouTube. So they'll be on there this evening and you can catch up and it's, it's kind of nice to watch them on YouTube because you can scroll through some of the areas that you've already seen or back it up to areas you want a little bit more instruction on, um, just the clarity of why he's doing things the way he is. And <laughs> sometimes you're like, wait, I just missed that. Not from a psychological that. standpoint, but just from a procedural standpoint. That evaluation will come in episode 50. <laughs> I'll be on that couch. <laughs> I'll have a clipboard. Why do you scumble so much? And how long have you been feeling this way? <laughs> See, all I'm doing is adding a little bit more white to my mix. And just a little bit, that's the operative phrase, because that will alter the, the mix, right? And you're not going to have big, major uh, changes in, in the, the color of the clouds, right? So that's perfect, right? Then later on, then we can, we can uh, have more uh, drastic changes when we get closer to the moon as it gets uh, illuminated uh, uh, in, in a much brighter way. But for the distant clouds, you know, uh, you're gonna have fun with it. Uh, and you can tell all the different shades already. Now later on, we might switch to a, a, a smaller brush to, to uh, put in more detail on there, but 
Uh, for now, this will work. And when you're when you're getting a, a new mix and you wanna uh, kind of see where where how close you are, you can always compare it to uh, the existing, yeah. Just play around with it. Uh, like I said, it's best if you got a photo reference that uh, will help uh, guide you with uh, shapes, etc., etc. If you're not, uh, uh, if you haven't been doing a lot of clouds lately, and you, you want them to uh, get them to be a little bit more realistic, the best way is you know find a photo of one and and copy that. John is on this morning. Hey, John. John's Welcome. Island H. <laughs> Silent H? John with the silent H. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Yeah, the brush is getting pretty beat up. Actually, it gets, it's, uh, it's not a bad thing for doing clouds, right? So at, at the end, don't throw your brush away because it might be handy for the next time you do clouds. It's kind of good to know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't yeah. have to throw stuff away. You don't, you don't. Now, it may not be useful in other applications, but Sometimes it's just perfect for, for uh, you know, clouds or bushes or whatever. Uh, okay, so we're trying to break up this thing here a little bit, a little bit more, uh, and in order to maybe do, emphasize that a little bit more, uh, we'll go ahead and put in some even lighter clouds in there. Are you hitting the canvas every time? Or sometimes you're just moving the brush but not actually touching down? Um, yes, that's the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I've got my motion and uh, what changes is the pressure I put on to the canvas, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I back off, um, it, it completely lifts away from the canvas, right? But so I'm in the neighborhood of where it's barely touching mm -hmm. it and sometimes it won't. Right. Sometimes it's a little bit more, but on the average, it's uh, barely on there. Okay, so um, yeah, that, that's a good observation. Uh, obviously, it's not as effective if you don't touch the canvas. 
but it looks good on video. When right. You're doing, uh, and you're doing your your motions. I might actually try for a side view. Uh oh. What? Safe. You see if it's touching? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's if, the, cool. if the paint lands on there, then it's touching. <laughs> The randomness is uh, essential, yeah? It's so easy. It's, it's human nature to, to recognize uh, images, shapes, patterns in things that they look at, right? So they may not be consciously looking for it, but if you give them enough of a, of a visual, they'll, their imagination will fill in the blanks and uh, say, oh, I see a face. I mean, I, I hear that all the time. I see a face on the... On the on the on the side of the mountain, and I always tell them, "Look, put the mic tie down, <laughs> all right, and it'll disappear." <laughs> no, I don't say that. That's they were drinking. No, no, you can, no, no, you you can keep the mic tie. But it's just human nature, so you know, and that looks um, that works against you unless that's if you're doing a, maybe a surreal painting where you do want these images to to be barely there but can be recognized, and in, in which case that's fine. But um, other than that, you probably don't want to do that, okay? Um, let's see here, let's, let's break this guy up a little bit. The variety in the, the different um, shades that you can put on there um, helps to uh, keep the cloud from looking flat. Yeah, so uh, that's always uh, in your favor when it doesn't look flat. Breaking it up, breaking it up.
glow around the moon is dry, correct? That's yes, everything, everything is dry. Otherwise, if it's not dry, you, with, the, with the harsh strokes that you're putting on there, you're gonna scrape it off. So you must wait until it's dry. And, you know, I mean, beyond uh, the, the kind of blending you're doing while everything is wet, you know, do that as well in the first stage. But as, as you uh, recall, when you look at the, the images that we have in the, in the, uh, in the past, I try to uh, soften as much as I can, uh, but I knew I wasn't gonna finish it, right? That wasn't the approach I was, I was going for. Uh, but you don't, you don't need to leave a lot of work for yourself for the next time that you're gonna do it, right? Just do as much as you can uh, at, at every stage, okay? and then add on to it uh, later on, right? So I can really work the brush into the canvas because there's no fear that I'll scrape anything off. We have a, a new friend, Jasmina, Jasmina. is on. Do you know welcome. who she is? She... I don't think I do, this unless is... she corrects me. No, well, she's one of, um, I'm guessing one of your fans uh -huh. and uh, um, Kind of fun. Okay. It's hard to zoom in on, but uh -huh. she um, look at that seascape. Oh yeah, I think yeah, that's that's awesome. Right. Very good. Yeah, I think maybe from Instagram, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I think she's shown I think she's shown me some of her work. She's very good. Yeah. She's very that's good. That's great. I know, and and that's another thing too is like you know uh, when I was first starting out, I. Uh, I copied my uncle's work, right? Um, and but to have a um, a basis from which you can start and uh, and build on, uh, it's a great thing, right? Um, and but that that's excellent, Jasmina. Very good. Congratulations. I'm gonna shoot a get a shot of it. Okay. As soon as I can, so we can share it real quick. A little hard to see. Yeah, nice work. Excellent work. Congratulations. Jeez, really? Sorry. But no. Jeez, I had a cloudy camera, but I thought I was on the other camera when I went to clean it. And I was messing it. Oh, wait, what's up? This is my camera that's cloudy. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Mix some paint. <laughs> Mix some paint that'll get me off the hook for a minute. <laughs> Stop. Oh, jeez.
using a, a dry brush over here to uh, kind of feather the um, Alexa, the, the, uh, the strokes and uh, dissipate the thing a little bit, okay? Whatever it is that you can do to facilitate the effect that you want, go ahead and do that. trying to get as much um, volume uh, into the clouds as possible without going overboard and, and what I mean by going overboard is that the contrasts that you have on there are you know get really uh, unbelievable you know for uh, a night scene yeah so you want to avoid that but um, it's kind of important to make sure that you know it doesn't look flat yeah you because know, that's not interesting so kind of in this you know from my perspective i uh -huh. can look at this uh -huh. and say hey this looks done it's good it looks uh -huh. really good uh -huh. sign it up uh -huh. sell it uh -huh. but i know it's not done uh -huh. and um is that that you're just going to continue to kind of make those clouds billowy and give it the dimension by adding more texture and paint to mm -hmm. Well, the, um, uh, where, where it helps is where you have a, a, a plan, a visual mm -hmm. plan, a look that you're going after, right? If you don't have uh, a target that you're going after, um, it makes it more difficult because, um, you know, just imagine if, if you're shooting bows and arrows and, and, you know, anywhere, it's not as much fun and challenging as if you put a target in there and try to hit the bullseye. Right, you put your effort uh, towards getting that bullseye right, and if you come close to the bullseye, well, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. But imagine you don't have a target; you're just shooting it into the forest. It's not as much fun. Mm -hmm. Not as much fun as you're going after something, right? So, uh, and going after the bullseye, it it will improve all the other skills that go into getting it right. Right, steadier hand, better aim. All of those things will develop because you're applying yourself, right. right? To just shoot at any old place, yeah, you shot it, but you know, did you up your skill level? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Probably because you didn't make an effort towards that right. goal, right? So, um, yeah, you can go on and on this way and that way, um, and um, you know, and, and you you may create things that look like clouds, but you know, is it? Uh, done in a dynamic way, kind of dramatic way, mm -hmm. um, you know, chances are no. Right? So that's kind of the finesse part of, 
uh, of separating uh, really, um, you know, good artists from really great artists. Is uh, that's one of them. That's mm -hmm. one of them. It's the, I think, you know, I mean, the, the idea that, uh, first of all, uh, there are many different ways that um, art is um, uh, purposeful to anyone, right? Um, everybody gets out of it what they want. Um, and, uh, but if, if yours is kind of like mine, you know, I, I like the idea of um, the, the, the imagery that evokes uh, emotion. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's me. That's the way I like to paint, right? So everything I do uh, feeds into that, right? Now, if that's not your thing, then you're probably not going to do what I'm doing, right? But nonetheless, some of the other uh, parts of this um, can be taken piecemeal and apply it to yours, right? That's the beauty of it. You don't have to paint the way I do. But by explaining why I do what I do, um, it, it might still help you with, with what you're doing, even though it's not the same as mine, yeah? Uh, it, you know, it is subjective, right? Um, as, as it should be. Wait, were you just using the other hand? Oh no, you grabbed the I, brush. I got two brushes. Okay. One is uh, dry to uh, kind of feather the strokes I do with the, the, the loaded brush. So it's a little something new going on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a card trick. Hey, what, do you, what do you just do? So you lay it down wet and then you feather it with something dry. If, if I try to feather it with the same brush that's loaded with paint, but sometimes it's not enough, mm -hmm. so I help it along. Wait, what? What's not enough? Enough the dryness? Feathering. No, oh, the, the feathering. feathering. Gotcha. The feathering. Right? So again, right? You're going after an effect. If you don't get it one way, try to get it another way. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I'd be good at painting with two brushes at the same time. It's a skill I could master. Well, well, then you can teach me because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> My grandma could do that. <laughs> I've heard a lot of things. My dog can do that. Yeah, probably. They got a lot of teeth. They can hold stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Getting there.
Same colors, guys. I'm just uh, obviously uh, added more white. So, you know, the, the mix is the same, yeah? But the proportions uh, change. Some of it's very subtle. That's fine. You want a, you want a variety of different looks. So, uh -huh. and let's do a little bit more here. And maybe we can go into the mountains a little bit. It's the mist of the clouds. <laughs> Sky mist. Oh, you mean clouds? Oh, oh. <laughs> sky mist. I like it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna switch brushes. 
Okay. Uh, so that we can get a little bit more uh, detail. We'll go with a smaller guy. Let's see. What do we got here? Is that the plural word for a <laughs> lot, of, lot of brushes? A, get a pile. pile. It's a pile of. There's brushes. How come you have a knife? Um, what do you use that palette knife for? Is that here? Yeah. Um, just to move paint around, or oh. if there's a big mix, uh, usually more for my um, uh, acrylic. Uh, mm -hmm. highlights and stuff I have to mix a, a big batch this is something cool too as I'm rolling by mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, paint thinners is very clear and one is a tiny bit cloudy mm -hmm. and it's how many sessions has that been four and yeah it's only a tiny why well the, why only why? a tiny bit cloudy when you're cleaning your brushes well because I, I don't clean it by you know swishing it around in there Mm -hmm. Right, I get the brush wet and then I try to uh, discard all the paint on my palette uh, and then I wipe it off and then I get it wet again and, and so I don't swish the, the, the brush in there. Um, no dunk, no swish. Well, I just dunk it in there to get it wet and it picks up the wetness mm -hmm. and I and I load it here on the, on the glass. And then do you dry off your brush before you start painting again? Oh, yeah, well, as dry as you can get it. It's not yeah. going to be bone dry. But you wipe it so that it's not like... You get rid of the excess yeah. of uh, thinner, yes. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... Add on to that later on, but I'm establishing clouds that are closer to the moon to kind of break up that uh, that circle that kind of surrounded it earlier. It's 
So you can tell there's a different mood in the in the studio today when it's just me and you <laughs> versus hey, the Mary antics. Jean, Mary Jean is going to see this later. You better watch what you're saying. <laughs> I got no one napping on the couch this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, the snoring has cut back a lot. Oh yeah, for those of you guys wondering where Mary Jean is um, today, I guess she had more important things to do. Yep, she just couldn't couldn't get up. Couldn't get up. Tomorrow, Mary Jean is going to hike Coco Head. And that is a monster hike up railroad ties in Hawaii Kai, up um, Coco Head. Is that tomorrow that she's doing it? Yeah. Wow. She does it once a month. Mm. That's a, it's twice as hard coming down as it is going up. What? Because the railroad ties are so close together, so the oh, coming down is... And you're not using gravity to help you. Yeah. It's tough. You could just lie down. You could. You could just roll down that That's what road. I'm saying. You're making it more difficult than it needs to You be. might not survive, but you could get down fast. Yes, yeah, right. Oh, if survival is a part of success, then yeah. <laughs> you may have to re-strategize that. That's a nice hike to do on a full moon, too. Oh, when you, when, you, when you can hardly see? Yeah. Well, you bring flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> you know. One facing down, I, one facing up. No, you know where you're going. I, I think I, daylight is what you want. Nah, it's pretty. You don't need a flashlight. And I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> I can tell. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to. Makapu is a good one at, at a full moon and sunrise. That, that's an easy one. I, I've pushed a baby stroller up there many a time. <laughs> but you, did, you didn't ask the baby's permission. I'm no. Sure. No, they, they are happy to ride. They don't need, they, they're happy to go somewhere when they're that little. Mm. But pushing an extra 30 pounds up a hill, not a fun, not a fun ride. I'd rather, you know, just see the moon from your painting. It's so much more relaxing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the term blue moon? Yep. What is that? <laughs> you know, you can Google this, right? <laughs> I know, but I like your expertise better. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yes, I, I forget what it was, but Wait. it was it's rare. That's why. Uh, so a moon could be blue, is what they're saying? Um, well, they also said it was blood red, so. Yeah. And I've seen blood, and I... <laughs> it's not, it doesn't it's look not the same. same. It's the second it's, full moon, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenon when... Um, Not only that, they can't explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's when smoke or dust particles get in the way of the moon, then it appears blue. Uh, what it really is is dirty. Uh -huh. <laughs> dirty atmosphere. But it is. It's the second full moon. Yep. Right. See? You're brilliant. <laughs> You're brilliant. I Never to, fails to, to amaze me. Always fails to amaze me. No, <laughs> you, you always cease to amaze me. Uh, my what husband often say, tells it, me it, not to talk. Uh, <laughs> well, if, if he doesn't have a comeback, then yeah. <laughs> Now, ah. 
when you're looking at this painting, would this be something that um, palm trees would uh, end up in? Um, well, if the uh, the owner of the gallery wants me to put it in there, I'll put some in there. Does she want? I think she might like a few. A couple palm trees and some white birds and Wait a, minute. a house and stars house. and maybe a rainbow. There's actually a whole <laughs> village on the other side of this mountain. <laughs> I'd like some vegetation. And apu a -a, please. Oh, really? <laughs> really? That would have to be a giant one. Couple fishermen, some boar hunters, vegetation that covers that part of it. Need a waterfall. Okay. Um, <laughs> Stream. All right, all right, let, me, let me stop you there. No, the, the other thing that you got to keep in mind is you don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff in your painting in such a way that it gives the viewer the impression of like a, uh, a photo where everybody leaned in to be in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not going to help you, right? Sometimes, uh, in fact, less is more sometimes, right? Yep, I know a painting you have a lot less in and it is more powerful than... Because it's that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, a great title, Dreams. Yeah. That's a, a great piece that speaks volumes with very minimal. That's, that is uh, in Lahaina right now, that yeah. original. They got it yesterday? Yep. Yesterday or the day before? I think it was yesterday. Again, I'm using a dry brush to help feather some of the edges. Okay, this, this dark blue sky right here uh, looks weird, right? So let's get rid of that. So I'm just getting the mix lighter and lighter, and then I'm going over the areas that I believe um, uh, should be lighter because it's getting hit by um, the moonlight, right? Mm -hmm. And as I go further away from it, then I, I, then I won't do it as much. But all the edges that are kind of pointing at it, yeah, that would be a good place. And you can go on and on and on, but, um, and I kind of will because it's not where I want it to be just yet. This, this area here needs work. I 
And anytime you can, you know, like step outside and observe how things really are in nature, that's always a good thing too, huh? So load up on all the things that will help you with your painting, whether it's uh, photos or uh, nature itself. All of that is good. So this is a does this is a little bit lighter color, right? You're, yeah, I'm just adding white. I'm just adding more mm -hmm. white to the mix. Right? So that the uh, the proportions of the colors that are mixed in there changes favoring more white, right? Because I added more white. Um, so you know that may, that should make things a lot simpler because you're not really changing uh, the, the, the basic uh, uh, colors that you're using, you're just adding more of one than the others, right? Oh, there we are, feathering it in. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a play-by-play. -play. That's right. Now, some of the, the techniques you are using, um, uh, can they be used with an acrylic paint too? Or I'm, I'm not an acrylic painter, mm -hmm. right? But I imagine in the basic idea of it, you can, but you an acrylic dries really fast. Yeah, so I wondered if you could feather acrylic. Sure, you could. I mean, but your, your, I would imagine your time is more pressing. You gotta do it quickly mm -hmm. because it'll dry on you, right? Whereas the oil paint kinda hangs in there a little bit longer, gives you time. I've seen some really, really good acrylic painters, and so I know that you know whatever um, they were doing, they were doing it at a high level of excellence. Um, yeah, it's 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 uh, even acrylic. You feel like you use people use a lot, right? You, I'm used to seeing a lot of acrylic painters with thick paint. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's just a style, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a painterly approach where you're not trying to feather anything. In fact you're trying to avoid feathering anything. Right. And you know, that's, you know, that's legit. Did you make the pattern in the moon the way you um, you wanted it to, or did you have you seen a pattern that looks like that before? They all look like that. Oh, it's the same. You only see one side of the moon. Everybody only sees one side of the moon. 
the one that's facing the earth, right? It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't spin. Um, that's why there's the dark side of the moon that nobody sees. Right. The right. Dark side. But sometimes, uh, uh, I guess down below, it's, it's kind of upside down, yeah? It, oh. it kind of looks like a rabbit with rabbit ears this way, but in another part of the globe, it's upside down. Interesting. But it's always the same side. So you can get a reference for that. Yeah. Yeah. That one's easy to find. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you don't have to go sift through a bunch of photos just to get the, the picture that you like. They're all the same. Are you feathering inside the moon or around it? Um, I'm going into the moon knowing that I'm going to work on the moon later. Mm. So it doesn't matter if I spill into it. I, I'm trying to soften uh, the colors around it. Now, do you breathe a lot when you're painting or do you hold your breath when you're doing things that are like kind Just of... like exercise, <laughs> I breathe out on exertion. <laughs> Because I, I find myself holding my breath, and I'm not even the one doing anything. Well, that, yeah, that's the fear in you. <laughs> oh, is it in myself? Okay, so now we got these two cloud formations kind of left and right of the moon, right? And um, I don't, you know, I don't like that. So we're going to try and break that up. So this yeah, it looks like they're on top of each other. They're so parallel. Is that normal? <laughs> I just said I didn't like it. Oh, good. <laughs> so we will, uh, like I said, break that up. And by breaking it up, what technique are you going to use? Uh, I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to spread one out a little bit more than the other. Because mm. if I do it the same way, then they will all, they'll be even in another orientation. So that's not good. And uh, you want to be mindful of your spacing of the blue skies, right? So that the spacing between the clouds is not all the same, right? Again, try to make it as randomly uh, put on there as possible.
So then maybe we can make it appear as though uh, some of the clouds that was covering the moon is kind of dissipating a little bit and uh, exposing the moon. So that's kind of like a nice effect, yeah. That's a lot better. Hello. I have your lunch. You just have to reheat it. Okay. Thank you. You're Are you guys taking off? Yeah, yeah. All three of you? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey, Raleigh. Where are you hey. going? What? Going to work. You're Earl's working today? Got, yeah, yeah, Earl's flight got canceled. What? So I have to work Nice. He, he called you? He texted me. Oh, yeah. That's kind bye. of, yeah, okay, bye. never worked this hard in her life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't forget your checklist at the end of your shift. I would. <laughs> Bye, babe. All right, have a good one. Okay, this is, this is not bad. Not bad at all. It's kind of very, very close to... Not, we're not done yet, but it's very, very close to what I have in mind.
and then you can just go and take a look at the, all of what you've done so far and, and see uh, where you can uh, make some adjustments to um, you know, uh, improve the look better, right? So um, that's all I'm doing now. Um, to, to not do that is um, not necessarily a bad thing.